Onofre was. San Onofre is the Spanish name of Saint Onofreus Magnus, who lived about 400 A.D. in Christian Egypt. Naked in the desert as a hermit and confessor, ironically, this naked saint was later adopted in the West as the patron of the Weavers, where he was called Saint Humphrey the Great. Many celebrate his feast day on or around June 12, which is when the Spanish came to that part of California. It is said that the saint intercedes when a good festival happens, thus ensuring that the June gloom will go away. The surf will be excellent and the sun will shine. So we ask San Onofre to help us have a good festival tonight to expose San Onofre. For months, Southern California Edison's customers have been paying for the San Onofre nuclear plant even though it is delivering no electricity. The Public Utilities Commission hasn't been much help. For more than eight months, ratepayers of Southern California Edison have been paying $54 million a month. I think you might hear some of that type of information in our poetry tonight, and I think you might also hear some passion, which is why poets gather, because we're very passionate people. So I'm going to bring up our first poet tonight. Uh, he's an award-winning writer. Uh, his novel that was published last year has won two awards, and uh, one of the first poems that he had published was translated into, I can't remember, Gary, if it's 30 or 300 languages. 100 countries. 100 countries. So we have a very talented man here. He's uh, a regular at our open mic that we have the fourth Thursday of the month, the uh, fourth Thursday open mic, Jimmy, which uh, we, we welcome nuclear poets as well, if you want to come out for that. We'll be here on the 15th of this month. And so, would you please welcome Gary Winters. Hey. Good friend. Thank you. Uh, hot stuff. 439 nuclear reactors in 31 countries and 150 naval vessels using nuclear propulsion can't be all wrong, or can they? Italy has banned nuclear power. Germany will close all nuclear reactors by the year 2022. It's a hot topic, encompassing the heat of the atom and the fate of the world. Our world. Earth. Get it? So what's a poor poet to do? To do, to do, to do it'll be do. Well, here's a thought. Get interested in just what nuclear power is and what it is not. Oh, sure, what a hoot. Poets sniffing daffodils on the one hand and studying nuclear physics on the other. Never happened because it's too simple. Got to be harder to know what's what and what's not. Thank you. And if you just came in, we're lighting candles to shed light on the lies of San Onofre and also to honor the victims, the people that died in Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima. That's what the lighting of the candles is. By the way, I don't know if you guys are following the information from the East Coast. There's a reactor very similar to Fukushima that has become within inches of being inundated and not having any way to cool the spent fuel pools. It's called Oyster Creek, so keep them in your 
thoughts and prayers. So this is called um, Here They Kiss the Sky. <clears throat> right now, a cosmic conveyor belt spews a gigabecquerel a day of radiation over all things that grow, fly, creep, or swim, like tuna across the sea. Radiation is steadily dripping like an IV into our oceans and is carried along the jet stream to infuse a strange new pollen into every stigma, style, and ovary that gives root to life. An invisible yellow soaks in deeply enough to bury an indelible early death mark into every morsel of sustenance that will feed the next 1,200 generations. You cannot see DNA warping about like a speeding jet fighter spiraling out of control, nor hear the crash of hot particles embedding themselves into unmelted mountains of exposed flesh. But you may have heard the muffled cry of a mother who has miscarried, or may have a vague recollection of a time when a slightly metallic taste lingered all day at the back of your throat. A media fog has helped to mist away most everyone's memory of the meltdowns with a thickness that has engulfed the evidence and quieted away the gasps of those who have witnessed the unzipping of grotesque mutations. We should be measuring how fast radiation is oozing up the food chain so we might avoid thickening our gravy with the broth of creatures capable of silencing the coming springs. Instead, we have raised the safe exposure limits to mask the melee to come. Invisible toxic presence rain down on farms, fields, and pastures with little cancerous locks that say, don't open until Christmas 2036. Of course, the children don't have to wait that long. Even now, dairy cows concentrate cesium-137 into baby bottles and the cups too often tipped over by toddlers. Spilled milk runs sour down the breakfast table leg to leave a putrid, permanent stain on the floor that will glow with the truth for the next 240,000 years. The fact is, they have really fucked up this time and they don't know what to do. They can only look up high into the contaminated sky, plead for forgiveness and pucker up to our Creator before the lynch mob gets wise and comes for them. <laughs>